Hi kids and welcome to a new chapter recording and communicating knowledge. So in this particular chapter we'll be looking at how to record and communicate knowledge. Under the chapter communication we saw that messages can be sent in two different ways. Now one way was by speaking the second way was by writing a message. Now what is writing? Writing is a way of recording or storing words and ideas. People can read them at any point of time at any place at their own leisure. Now if you see ancient India, knowledge was generally passed on orally. Because of this, knowledge was communicated to a very small number of people and as a result there was loss of knowledge now as you can see here this person is sitting here and passing on knowledge to his peers whereas none of them really have a book or a pencil or anything to record what he's saying so it could have been interpreted in different ways and the knowledge could have been lost very easily so slowly what happened was better methods of recording and communicating knowledge came into existence so then we had the development of written communication so we came up with written communication now if you see written communication the earliest form of written communication that was discovered was through pictures mainly of animals found on the walls of caves where early men lived in if you can see this picture here it is that of a cave painting from bimbetka of madhya pradesh a cave where you could see paintings of animals and peoples different animals like cows maybe sheep when you see the drawback of this mode of communication making pictures took a lot of time so people started using symbols so these pictures were replaced by symbols later and this evidence was found in the sumerians of mesopotamia which is today's iraq so these guys were the first to develop a system of writing called as a script which were written on clay blocks called as tablet this right here is a clay block or a tablet and you can see there have been small symbols that have been brought forward when you see here this is a clear picture whereas here these are all symbols so we saw that pictures were replaced with symbols the same if you see egyptians the egyptians were using a script which combined both pictures as well as symbols which were used nearly 5000 years ago you can see here these are a combination of pictures as well as symbols the same thing if we see chinese and japanese scripts they both also contain pictures and symbols even today their language is built on pictures and symbols Now from then to now if we look at today we use the system of alphabets and they are symbols representing the different sounds that humans make do you agree a stands for a b stands for b so the different alphabets that we use today are nothing but representatives of the kind of sound we make with those alphabets and the first proper alphabet system was developed in syria nearly 3500 years ago and today if you see we have nearly 50 different alphabet systems being used in the world can you imagine having 50 different language systems that is just such a huge number right now what about english then If you see English the Roman alphabet system is used to write English and we know that it has 26 letters now if we have to talk about the history of India the oldest script found in India was from the Indus Valley civilization but the thing is no one has really been able to read the script fully yet so researchers are still working on it as to how they can read the indus valley scripts that were discovered now if you see brahmi brahmi was next to be discovered after the indus valley script if they saw the history of languages most scripts of indian languages today seem to have been derived from the brahmi script 
and then we have the devanagari script this is the most common and popular script that we have which is called the devanagari script and hindi and other few indian languages were derived from the devanagari script now this here is devanagari script if you look at it i'm sure it looks very similar to hindi right so hindi language was derived from the devanagari script now this was about writing alphabets what about writing numbers if you see writing numbers ancient times the early men used sticks and stones sometimes even pictures to record the number of animals they killed or the number of people in their village and things like that but this was not a very efficient way of counting later we had the romans who developed a system of writing numbers which used about 7 symbols to write any number from 1 to 1 crore so between 1 to 1 crore we had just 7 numbers to represent them today we use the hindu arabic system the hindu arabic system is the system that we use to count numbers today and this hindu arabic system was developed in india nearly 2000 years ago the arabs took it to europe and it spread worldwide from there so this is something that we have to feel proud about even the zero was invented in india and if you see the hindu arabic system this system uses 10 symbols from 0 to 9 so you have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 these were the 10 symbols that we used to represent any number whether it is small or whether it is the largest number you've seen we use numbers between 0 to 9 to represent them so this is about how writing of numbers evolved if we have to see writing as such we needed something to record writing on right you just can't write in air so then they had to develop something on which they could write which was paper if you see paper Ancient Egyptians used the stem of a plant called as papyrus which made paper nearly 4000 years ago. So this explains why we have the word paper. It was derived from the word papyrus. That's why we have the word paper. And the first true paper we know today was made in China and it was made from bark of trees. and this was made nearly 1900 years ago the chinese allowed these bark of trees to be made into a pulp and then they were spread into a sheet and left to dry so that they could write on it but today we use wood pulp to make paper so if you can see the picture right here this is box of wood and it is getting converted into a pulp and this pulp gets spread into a sheet and then it is dried and rolled up so this is how we make paper even today now paper was invented long time before printing ever existed so books were written by hand on paper so you can imagine a book of say 50 pages all hand written how long would that take to make so this explains why it was a very slow and laborious process and why books were so rare and very few people actually had books back then then we had the whole concept of printing which came into the existence so the first type of printing that came into existence was developed in china nearly 2000 years ago and this was on a carved wooden block and it was printed so it was called as block printing so if you see block printing chinese cut designs on a flat wooden block so you can see here this is a flat wooden block and they applied ink on it and they pressed it on paper so once they did that the impression of the block came on to paper now when you see the block as such it took a lot of time to actually carve out the details of the block but once the block was done it was extremely easy to use and they could make multiple copies of a book from it then we had a revolution that set into the field of printing in the year 1450 johann gutenberg of germany brought a revolution how did he bring revolution he made several small metal molds of different alphabets and these he called them as types 
and these types could be arranged to form words lines paragraphs and pages and this was called as typesetting so when you arrange these types to form words it was called as typesetting so you can see in this picture here this person is typesetting a paragraph so he has arranged all the individual types into form a sentence and then a line and then he's building on the content so this was called as typesetting now this was a lot more easier and a lot more quicker when compared to a block making once the type was made ink was applied and pressed onto paper and several copies of books could be made and once several copies could be printed they were easily available they were also cheaper and more and more people started buying books and reading so reading developed during this season now when we say reading we generally say only people who can see can read right to help even the blind get knowledge a person developed a script for the blind now this script for the blind is called as braille okay so braille is the script for the blind this is a special script that is designed to allow a blind person to read a book using their fingers as you can see in this picture this person is feeling the paper to read what is written and it was developed by a noble person named as louis braille who developed this script now if you see the script the letters of each word were printed in patterns of small dots which were raised from the surface of the paper as you can see here it's like an embossed paper on which you can feel the pattern so even a visually challenged person could feel these patterns and read with the help of their fingers and these are how the different patterns are printed as you can see a has one big dot and five small dots so this is how it is printed so these are the different alphabets in braille and braille is read by running fingers along the dot so this is how you read braille now we have come a long way from counting with sticks and stones to painting pictures and caves up to printing of a book and braille so we can clearly say that knowledge and literacy can lead to progress now with the development of computers printing has become much much faster more efficient and much better and today we use softwares like page maker and in design to arrange the text and pictures in pages to print them so it is a lot more easier today now if a country wants to make progress it is important for knowledge to be communicated to the people of the country so this communication has to reach a large population of people and this can happen only if the people of the country know how to read and write so we can also say that literacy is the key to success without literacy if you don't know how to read and write you cannot really help the country succeed but unfortunately if you see indian scenario a large number of people cannot read or write so we have to move towards educating people so that more and more people learn how to read and write so that we can build a progressive nation now this is the end of the chapter let us do a quick recap of where all we visited in the past and where we are today first we spoke about written communication and how important it was then we spoke about writing numbers and how we use the hindu arabic system today to write which has 10 symbols from 0 to 9 to count any number big or small then we saw the invention of paper and we saw that the word paper was derived from papyrus which was the stem of a plant then we spoke about printing we saw that chinese were the first to invent printing with the help of block printing and we spoke about how printing was revolutionized by johann gutenberg by his types and type setting and then we spoke about how even blind people could read and the script for blind was called as braille and it was invented by louis braille finally we saw how knowledge and literacy leads to the progress of a country 
So with this, we've finished this chapter and there is one last thing I'd like to tell you that communication leads to innovation. So effective communication is very important. So you should talk to as many people as possible and gain knowledge from them and ideas from them to build a better nation. Thank you.